So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to 3D matrices, leading on in the next few videos to transforming uh, points in three dimensions. Okay? So what we need to be introduced to at this stage is this diagram. And what you're effectively seeing is the problem that we have with drawing three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional whiteboard, in this case. Okay? So we have a little bit of a problem. Uh, so you need to use your imagination here. What we're really looking at here is like the corner of a room. This is the floor. OK, this is one of the walls and this is another one of the walls. So think of it looking into the corner of the room. And what we're going to label is the x axis effectively coming out of the board. Y going to the right. OK, so x and y and z as your vertical axis. OK, so what we're used to is dealing with coordinates on a two like a two dimensional grid. OK, so now we can start thinking about, well, if I had the point here, which I could label as 1 along the x-axis, then it would have the coordinates of 1 in the x-axis, 0 in the y, 0 in the z. OK, likewise, this point here, which could be 1 along on the y-axis, would have the coordinates 0 along the x, 1 in the y, 0 in the z. And this point here, which is 1 up, would be referred to as 0 in the x, 0 in the y, 1 in the z. OK? And so you can have these 3D coordinates. Now, there is something linking these here, really, isn't there? Because the way that I've done 1, 0, 0 there, if you think of it as a position vector, what is the position vector for that coordinate? Then you need to go 1 in the x, 0 in the y, 0 in the z. 1, 0, 0. And the position vector for y here, or the y coordinate, or sorry, the coordinate 0, 1, 0, is 0, 1, 0. And the position vector for the 0, 0, 1 is 0, 0, 1. And what I've drawn there is the identity matrix for a 3x3 three uh, three three matrix. So the identity matrix, as we understand it for 2D transformations, uh, is that when I apply the identity matrix, it keeps all the points fixed. And exactly the same for three dimensions as well. OK, so this is our identity matrix in 3D. Now, the thing with uh, describing uh, this diagram as using the, the floor, a wall, and another wall, is that each of these surfaces we can refer to as planes. So a plane is an infinitely long, in every direction, flat surface, okay, which is infinitesimally thin, so, you know, thinner, thinner than this whiteboard that I'm holding, okay, but this wall here, okay, can be a plane, this can be a plane also coming out at an angle if you wanted to, you can have a plane going at any angle you like in three dimensions. We're interested mainly in three of them, so this floor, for example, which we could label as the xy plane, okay? Because it contains the x-axis and y-axis and not the z. Likewise, this one we could refer to as the yz plane. And this wall could be represented as the xz plane. Now, the thing to recognise is that on the xy plane, z is always zero. So on the floor, I'm at zero height. So x, y, the x, y plane can also be referred to as z equals zero. Okay. Likewise, for the y, z plane, you'll notice that these two points are on the y, z plane, and x is always zero. And on the x, z plane, these two points 
uh, y is always zero. So these are the equations of those three planes in three dimensions. Okay, that's what we understand them to be. So what we're going to be doing in the next few videos is really investigating what uh, transformations we are going to be dealing with in the three dimensions.